So welcome everybody to Be Coached Live. Uh, just FYI, this is being recorded and this part of the session will be used on social media just to showcase coaching demonstrations. So if anybody does volunteer to be coached, be mindful that it will be used on social media. Um, and yeah, this is your opportunity really to kind of get some coaching, pretty much any issue kind of within scope and uh, really trying to help you make a breakthrough if you have hit a stumbling block, if you're not quite sure why you keep doing the thing you keep doing and you just can't reach your goal. Uh, the first part of the session is always reserved for our master spiritual life coaches and our trauma-informed spiritual facilitators. And, you know, we always end up coaching or I'll pull cards, we'll talk about the course. And one of the cards that came out was about commitment. So we had a big, lovely discussion around what commitment means to us. And what commitment means to me, you know, we're just hitting September. We can feel the kind of autumnal changes. So we'll start to feel that in, in our senses as well. And it's funny, isn't it? We all save our goals to the end or the beginning of the new year when actually we're committed to ourselves <laughs> all the time. Um, and, you know, to me, commitment, because it was like, what does commitment mean to you? Part of commitment is sacrifice. You know, when we fully commit to something, we normally have to sacrifice something in order to be committed to that thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bad sacrifice, but there is some level of sacrifice that may need to happen in order for you to fully commit to your path. Another card I pulled actually just for interest for everybody is what are you addicted to? And I thought, oh crikey, that's a bit of a probing question, isn't it? But then I thought about it and I thought, well actually, we're all, we're all addicted to something. You know, that our earthly experience is all about sensation. You know, we have our vices. <clears throat> but actually, we're actually addicted to the way we think without us really knowing it. And it was just interesting because just had a kind of coaching conversation with one of our students um, who gave me permission to kind of go there and without sharing any details. Uh, you know, the way that we think, we just believe that that's the way it is. So therefore, we just carry on. And in a way, it's kind of a form of addicted addiction. It's our support, you know, it's it's just the way it's always been. It's who I am, it's the way I do things. It's hard to let go of sometimes, but with the awareness and the awareness of who you actually want to become and what you want to achieve, you have to substitute one thing for another, a little bit like addiction. The subconscious mind, in order for it to let go, of a pattern has to have a substitute take its place so because otherwise the brain always searches for meaning well what does it mean if i let go of this way that i've been thinking oh no it's too risky it can't it needs a substitute so what's coming in in its place and you want that to obviously be the positive uh, of yourself that you want to step into so it has to then have the substitute and go okay no this is what we're replacing it with don't worry it's not just going to free fall and there'll be you know a cave where we're all going to fall into it this is the substitute now does that make sense okay so let me take a deep breath <laughs> <laughs> so this is your time really this is your space i'm here of my free will to offer myself for coaching. So please take the opportunity and reach out. You can keep your cameras off, by the way, if you wanna be coached and you know you wanna remain anonymous in some way. So just speak out those who would like to have a little coaching. Demo. 
Um, I don't know if this is a coaching thing. So if, if it doesn't, we can reserve it for another time. It's just with, um, I remember listening to one of your um, sessions and you were talking about stepping into your role as a coach, like yeah. on social media. So, you know, start being that person now, start sharing things now. Um, the issue I have, or one of the issues I have is that I have, like my my goal my end goal is to actually give up what I do now eventually and do this full time however I have connections on my Facebook social media pages with um my bosses <laughs> and yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> if yeah. I start doing that they're going to start wondering what's going on and then mm -hmm. I feel like I'm kind of in this in between the two mm -hmm. but I it can and it just and, I, and that kind of sense, I feel that the whole, it's holding me back from fully embracing it in that in the social media aspect. 100% that's understandable. So what is the actual issue that you've got with it? The concern that if I start sort of, you know, being very open about what my um, yeah. uh, training as a coach and, and from yeah. being a person that they're going to feel or suspect or, something's coming or think I'm not yeah. doing my job properly or 100 percent so that yeah so that's that's the uh that's the concern so what is the question <laughs> what is the question <laughs> um I suppose the question is how do I overcome that but I, I guess really part of me is thinking well you're just gonna have to go in feet first and just get on with it is it a case of overcoming it, overcoming that, or is it a case of kind of figuring out a way to do it where they won't find out? Like what, you know, be realistic. Um, I suppose it's a case of um, doing it a way where they won't find out. I've got so many friends on that page that to start again would be like, it would be a bit of a headache, I think. So Are your friends going to be your clients? Do you want them... Um, depends because some of them might be people that would say, for example, if I was able to uh, run some workshops or things like that, they may be interested. So you can invite your friends, like you can invite people. So, okay, the thing with social media is, number one, people fear people across the street seeing them and judging them. Okay, that's the biggest thing. Like people have so many blocks on social media. Think mm -hmm. about what is it you're trying to achieve? That's the number one thing. Why do you even want to be on social media promoting your business? Like, what is your end game? You might not know that now. I'm just, just throwing it out there. You know, what's your end game? Is that the right platform for you? Hmm. You want to set up a business page anyway. You don't want to do it on your, you know, it's fine to share things on your, on your personal page. But when you actually come to, you know, have your business, that needs to be on its own business page. So you can set that up sooner rather than later or start a group and invite the people you want to be on there. Yeah, okay. So nobody that's going to make you feel in any way insecure or sabotage your job. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, and then I can run with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a tricky one. If you've got your bosses on there, you either remove them and do what you want to do or you set up a new thing you know and hope that they don't find it if it's a private group then they won't no yeah I think a fresh a fresh private group would probably be the way to go because obviously you know then you can keep your content um uh, relevant and separate from your you can put I think it's good to put a few personal things in there because it may, it humanizes you as well yeah, do they know you're doing the course? Uh, well, my direct upline does know I'm doing something. I did mention it because I didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah, I felt it was more authentic to kind of mention. She knows that I'm kind of into that sort of thing and she knew I was doing the meditation. But I just sort of said I'm taking it a step further um, with what I was doing. So, yeah. So you could start 
I mean, I don't know, you know, you only you know, but you, if you felt comfortable, you could start sharing your insights, mm. you know, and they can be small, they can be big. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I haven't done things like that before. I put previously, I'm quite, I like to think I'm a very positive person and like to share nice quotes and things like that, which could be helpful. So, yeah, I don't suppose that would be out, it's not out of character. I mean, it really does depend where you are on your journey. Um, if you're like, but no, I'm ready to start my business now, then I'd say, right, okay, well, look, you need to go do X, Y, Z business page. If you're just at the beginning of your journey, kind of, and you're like, you're still working, don't want your bosses to find out, but you still want to feel like you're moving forward a little bit, either remove your bosses, or if that's not possible, and you do want to keep this page, then just stop. And if they know you're doing the course, just saying you had this aha moment, you just did this exercise. Because if those people on there, you want to kind of let them get interested in what you're doing. So it's like a selling tactic in a way. Yeah. You know, you're showing them, this is the, these are the skills I'm gaining. And then um, once you come to get your business, they're more than likely going to go, okay, yeah, because I've been watching her journey. So she's definitely got something to offer me because she's just been telling me she's got to overcome this challenge. And she's had a breakthrough in this and that. I, I need that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Thank okay. You. Amazing. Anybody else? Who's next? Don't be afraid. Nobody? Okay, I think we can call it a day then. I can go and have an early dinner. Can we? Two more minutes. Nobody volunteers themselves for a coaching session. I'm not here, sitting here in silence. Got better things to do. Hey, nobody. Well, I'm feeling a little bit stuck, as I said at the beginning. Um, Who's saying that? I can't see. Uh, it's Lucy. Oh, hi, Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm just feeling a little bit stuck, I, I think. Um, like I said, I've been on my spiritual journey it's all been going well I've been you know you know how it is when you get sort of the buzz from it and you want to be doing everything you, you like that and then I've come to a bit of a crossroads and a little bit of me feels like all the work that I've put in is yeah. to not so I can you know connect with like everything up there and you know be a fortune teller and this that and the other I feel that I've put it in place so I can live a human experience well. Mm -hmm. But now in doing that, I feel like I've lost a little bit of my spiritual connection. Although in just saying that, I have, I have, um, I am using what I've learned spiritually to live humanly. Does that make sense? Yeah. But then I feel like I'm not doing enough spiritually now in, in, in kind of in kind of like just in my practice, I suppose, okay. like in, you know, like I used to just love sitting at my angel altar and getting my cards out and, you know, feeling that I've, I'm connecting. Mm -hmm. And I do still feel that I'm connected. Mm -hmm. Like I had a bit of a wobble yesterday and I was like, oh, angels, you know, like I need you know yeah. just show me a sign and I feel that I got that sign yeah. but I feel like I'm just I don't know maybe my head's just not so much in the clouds and it's more on the ground my feet are more on the ground yeah 
So why do you feel stuck? Um, because I suppose I'm not doing those things that I would do it, that I was doing before and that maybe like they're not, like it's not interesting me as much as it did before or like I'm not getting that initial kind of like whoosh from it. Do you know what I mean? You know, when you like when you first start doing this work or it's like when you first start practicing yoga or something like that, you just get you get that whoosh, like that whoosh of energy. And I feel like that's plateaued off a bit. And then so then I I suppose I've started to doubt myself that like. Oh, should I be doing this? Or should, like, can I just be a normal person? But I know that I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not seeing where the stuckness is yet. Just because I suppose, like I say, that I feel like I'm not, it's not that like initial, initial feeling. So why is that? Why are you seeing that as being stuck then? Because I suppose that's what I've been like trying to work towards like trying to like I've been trying to get there like and, and maybe that's it like I know you never get there but maybe I have got to a place where I do feel I don't have to do that every day or I don't have to maybe it comes more naturally I don't know yeah so when you say get there explain to me what you mean by that Where's the um I don't really know. Maybe that's a little bit of the issue as well. Um Yeah, I, I think I think you know, maybe as well, you know, I was thinking, oh, I want to do this and I want to share it and I want to help people and, you know, what I've gone through and whatever. And and maybe at the moment I just feel a little shut down from that. Is there, like, I just want to be a little bit private and I just want to, like, keep that to myself. Yeah. And is there anything that's contributed to that, to this feeling right now, you know? circumstances um, anything happened that, yeah like I feel my life's changed you know um uh, within the last couple of years like I've met my partner we've moved in we've settled down and you know obviously that was something that I wanted to achieve and I feel very content and happy with it and so I suppose I'm not when I'm not striving in that way because I feel very content and settled yeah. but also I suppose I don't have the time to just sit in front of my little angel altar and light my candles and do my saging and 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 not because of him, you know, he's he he just lets me get on with it, but very um yeah, it's just it my life is different now, you know, from when going on my own and like being on my own for quite a long time to to having I suppose my life feels like a little bit more normal now. So so I'm just going to go back to the get there. Where where was it you were trying to get to? Metaphorically obviously, but where um, was it? Yeah, maybe to to feel just more like settled and balanced in like being a human being and being able to navigate life and situations and to be like to trust myself you know like I do feel like I've definitely got that like so, being an adult I suppose. So would you say the search for getting there you you are there? Yeah but there's all but I feel like there's always you're never there there's always there'll always be a next challenge or there'll be something else to and maybe that's as well that I'm a little bit like I've got so open and sort of connected that now I'm like a little bit like oh shit this is way too big like what am I going to do with this I need to just close it down be a normal person just go to work and 
her mime and you know sit on the couch and watch tv and and do that you know okay so do you want to get back to the to having a spiritual ritual practice yeah because and like I say I do you know I do still connect in I do ask my angels for things I feel connected you know I I read signs and you know stuff like that and of course because I found this sort of way in the first place because I was in such a bad situation and it helped me to get out of this situation. So I can't dismiss it because because I know what I did and, you know, being in a bad situation, all my manifestations and, you know, what I learned to do, everything. I got out of it because of my beliefs so I can't I can't I don't want to you know I can't just shut that down I can't have those deny that changed? Uh, no they haven't changed I just exactly. feel like my... the only thing that's changed what I'm hearing is is the way that you now connect yeah so I do... go on yeah Liz. No, I do remember, like, um, I did a bit of work with, like, a spiritual lady and stuff, and she did once say, she goes, oh, you know, after time, you, you'll you just ask, like, you'll just say, oh, angels, help me with this. You know, like, it hasn't got to be a whole ceremony of, you know, yeah. all this. And, and I suppose I feel like, is that enough? Like, is it enough? Like, is it, it am I doing it half-heartedly, I suppose? So you're not trusting yourself? Yes, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. Just let me ask you a really kind of deep, kind of bit vulnerable question. But what about this conversation is, is making you upset? Um, I have felt a bit emotional like the last couple of days and I do feel like, you know, there's energies with the moon and stuff like that. But I feel... And when you were talking to that other lady and it came up and it, it's the not being enough, I suppose. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. suppose not doing enough or not feeling that you've done enough is not, is like not being enough. By whose standards, Lucy? <laughs> Probably like the last lady said, like parent and having that. That's why it resonated with me so much when you said, like, ask oh, them to step aside. Because for me, it's not as though, like, it's not, um, you know, I haven't had a bad childhood. You know, my parents are lovely, like all that. So it's very conflicting. You know, I suppose if you've had a very bad childhood and your parents have been very horrible and that kind of thing it's easy to hate them but that's not my situation but I feel that like maybe it is time to not like physically say can you step aside but in my mind to say like Lucy you're grown up now like let those thoughts that are coming in to say oh you perhaps should do it this way or you perhaps should do it that way to step aside and then like you say even if I fall flat it's like okay so I didn't quite get it right that time but you know no one comes out the womb walking you know it's a process isn't it so that did really resonate when you said just ask them to step aside because it's I don't want to hate on them because I've not had that experience but I perhaps do need them to step aside a little bit yeah and like you know there's so much like I could say about what you've kind of just described and and how you feel about the spiritual practice and how you feel it should be done and all of that um but just with like the voice that maybe you can hear in your head that's telling you, well, this isn't enough. Like, you know, 
you're just not doing enough. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's by whose standards are we judging ourselves by? And that's the thing you have to become aware of. And, and if you think, oh, God, yeah, that that does that, that is reminding me of my mom, my dad, or the parent, you know, the people who had the biggest influence on you, a teacher or whatever, then that's that's a choice to make. It's because sometimes those voices are really flipping helpful, but if they're not helpful, then it is ownership is on you. Yeah. To to change it, to be aware of it, and to say, okay, mm, mm, now realize that was a that's a voice I've been hearing, but actually, it's time I took ownership of this now. Yeah, a hundred percent. And also, you know, when I think about it logically, like, how can a decision that a 77 year old parent can make for a 47 year old woman who have lived completely different lives, you know, although they were very close to the family, you know, I've been a single woman for a long time. He's a 77 year old man. And we don't, you know, looking at it logically, there's not a lot in common in the choices that we would make in our lives. And now we've lived our lives generationally as well. So, so what yeah, are you that's... really wanting? Is it to to feel ex accepted? Is it to get permission? Is it to be told you 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 know well done? You know what is I... it that you need there? I think like when you said about trust and stuff about trusting myself, and I suppose other people don't trust you until you fully trust yourself. So although I'm wanting like I have an expectation to present myself as this kind of person if I'm not fully believing that myself that I can make good decisions about things or trust in myself to make good decisions then that vibration is not going to be clear for other people to receive let me ask you a question again because it keeps coming back to me and I wrote it down like inverted commas get there that's a very abstract <laughs> and also as you said an unachievable get there because you said you're never fully there so I don't know what you mean by that because I'm not in your head so what but when I did ask you some questions you said you wanted to feel like settled and 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 all of those things and then you described your life now as being exactly that <laughs> so then I said well, are you there then? I suppose I don't trust myself to say that I am there. Why is that in then? case I'm not there or in case it all falls down again. Yeah. But then that's life, isn't it? You can't just have it. Yeah. I suppose, again, like how you were talking to the other lady, like it's that, if for me, it is a perfectionist thing. And I would resonate with that word that, like, can I just tie it all up in a box and just say that that's it and nothing's going to mo like move or change or whatever? The only thing you can potentially say to yourself, I am here now. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I think I do pretty well. Like, I just think I do all right, you know. Um, think, it, think about um, the way you described the metaphorical getting there yeah and maybe you thought you you know the the way that you held your practice um in the past has been a really pivotal part of you getting to this place which is happy settled content they I were think getting, as well that they were that, just let me finish they sorry. were getting you there yeah they were getting you here now so I maybe think... the, maybe the way that you did things because it got you here now, where do you want to go? Do you know what I mean? If you're here now and it's got you there, maybe there's another way of doing the connection that feels right now. I think as well a little bit like when you say it back in like how I want 
it to be and again that is that like perfectionist thing like that is I am an am I enough thing is that when I was setting up my angel altar and lighting my candles and doing all that it's mm-hmm. like I'm doing it the perfect way like that's the perfect yeah. way like if you google how to be spiritual or whatever that's how you should do it whereas <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm just driving along in my car and going please angel send me a sign and that and it's like they don't that's not right I'm driving I'm not concentrating I'm not like is that enough is there anything only you can answer that question Lucy is there anything wrapped around because when you were doing your spiritual practices your belief setting your altar thing everything like that you know you're the ritual you do it the perfect way was that before you were here now in this content settled environment that you're in because you said that really massively helped you get from there to here. Is that right? Did I hear that right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously when... So it helped, you said it helped you through some massive times, yeah? Yeah. So, do you feel like if you stop doing it that way, because it, it manifested this amazing life that you're in now with your partner, if you stop doing it that way, have you associated some, like, bad you know oh shit you know that the, the the cards might fall down if I stop doing it that way I'm just curious it might not be true at all um maybe I haven't really thought about it in that way just but... wondering if this if you've attached a belief well I, I've, I've got this life now because I did this that way and now I'm not doing it that way what's going to happen to my life now I'd I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, maybe. I hadn't really thought about it in that way. I feel like I should have a sense of gratitude for it all. Um, But, yeah, I think maybe it is that, like, sort of just that if I'm not doing it, like how I was doing it yeah will I get the outcome like if I'm not really putting as much effort into it or feel like I'm doing a bit half-heartedly or I've only got like five minutes to do it when I'm you know would have five hours to do it or whatever you know like through lockdown and all that and everything so yeah it it's like the amount of effort equates to how much you put in is how much you get out of it and stuff but maybe as well because I've got to where I want, I don't need as much effort to put into it. But that doesn't mean that I don't have as much gratitude for it. And how does that feel when you say that? Yeah, a bit more levelling, to be honest with you. And that it doesn't have to be so extreme in the way that, like, you don't have to go to church every Sunday to be able to speak to God, if, you know, if that's your thing or whatever. So, you, you know you can if he's all around you can connect all around so it's okay to just do it in my car or wherever I am yeah if you can't do it wherever you are you're totally fucked (laughs) yeah maybe I just feel like I think maybe as well like I just feel like a sense of duty that I've like I'm giving up on it or but but like you say it's everywhere isn't it you know so there's a difference with what you're saying because there's a what you just said there is different to to it's part of the same but it's different if you feel you're giving up on it then there'll be an there'll be an emotion attached to that But if you're well, saying... Yeah, maybe giving well, up wasn't the right word. Just doing it a bit more lacklustre, I suppose, like more half-heartedly. Well, I would disagree. Because when you know you trust yourself enough and you have the strong connection to source, which you've got always instantly, when you know that, I, I would say you've actually deepened your spiritual practice. And I think that's maybe what it comes back to again, like is the trust, like trusting myself, trusting the knowing, trusting, you know, even yesterday in the morning, I woke up really, my partner went to work early and he was up at four 
and so I got up and I couldn't sleep and I had a bath and I I just said Angel just like can you just show me a sign like this and what it was about and then five o'clock in the afternoon and I wasn't even thinking like I'd kind of put it out there and then I, I wasn't, you know, all day going, please, can the phone ring? Please, can the phone ring? And five o'clock in the evening, the phone rang. And then it even still just took me a minute to go, oh, I asked for a sign this morning. So I think it's just trusting myself and, like, knowing sort of how, like... Part of what you're how... saying is, is reminiscent of self-flagellation. And um, if I don't do it this certain way... And you know that card that I pulled around addictions? Yeah. Okay, there's a, and you know, it's like that. Okay, if I don't do this this certain way, then, you know, it's not enough, something, it won't happen, something bad's going to happen, or it won't, it won't work out for me. I've got to do it this way because I've associated that result, those results with this way of doing it. And that's the, that's, and when I'm not doing it that way, there's something wrong. And I think that's, then goes back to um like my dad energy and that I'm not doing it his way okay but just because I'm not doing it his way right does not mean that I'm not doing it the right way well how do you know that would be his way anyway like, <laughs> I don't know like, have you have you, might, just... have you got that have you made that connection <laughs> like has he ever sat over you and gone Lucy this is the way that you set up your altar this is the way you get up in the morning and meditate and pray. Has he ever given you any instructions on that's the way you do this? Definitely not with spiritual stuff, but okay, I just so you, feel like so you, in in other like areas of my okay, life. Okay, but you've like made it, that up, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Be correct. You've made that connection, not your I dad. Think, I think it's just that... Um, always yeah and trusting myself am I doing it the right way am I like am I doing it right am I doing it right did you respect your dad you know when he kind of gave you the advice and you know yeah because I feel like he's always right he's a very wise man okay and so you can see how, so, so you can see how you have made these connections for yourself yeah yeah so there's a level of trust with if I follow dad's instructions or dad's voice or what dad would do then it'll be right but if I'm left to do my own thing who knows am I getting you question <laughs> everything yeah and like I say with different with different people with different energies with you know it's very emotionless I'm very spiritual like it's you know <laughs> I don't know how we ended up together but that's how it is but yeah, no, that's definitely helped. I definitely feel that yeah, um, to have a bit more trust and confidence in myself in the areas that really matter, I suppose, in my life. Yeah. Okay, so I get it now. So it's like we've circled back on the conversation and I, and I get it now um, because at the beginning you said, you know, when, when we were talking to aura and we were talking about kind of parental influences and, and it was really resonating with you and a lot of it you know was making you emotional and I was thinking and then you see great upbringing and and everything I was like okay where you know where are we going with this like but now you've actually full circled it back and and I and, I, and the pennies dropped for me it's how you are making the association yeah with the parental voice but it's through a level of trust. It's yeah. because you've always trusted that voice and that voice has always led you to the right things and the right way of doing it. And now you've changed the way you're doing it. Whose voice are you listening to now? If you've always listened to dad's voice and dad's always got it right for you, that's the like overprotective person in, in a way of kind of you know, maybe yeah. not in this case I don't know but I'm just kind of generalizing a little bit you know that parent that always kind of met lovely but always mentors the kid you know you know instead of letting them fall and fail and learning yeah. and finding their own way through love but um 
do you know what I mean? Yeah. So the issue isn't the way you practice, is it? No, it is about knowing that there's different, you know, it's like they say there's more than one way to skin a cat. Like there's different ways to do things and it's trusting that on certain occasions my thinking doing something different is okay, like it's okay. Do you mean on, on occasion? Isn't it always okay? Yeah, I suppose just sometimes, like you say, if you're in a meeting and people are putting ideas out and sometimes their idea is a good idea, then it's like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to go with that. That's fine in, in the right contents. But in this, in this contents, I guess it's like, okay, the only real person you should trust is you and your connection to spirit and how it feels yeah so just let me make sure that you fully have got this as well what is the issue here what out of this conversation what has made itself apparent has been the issue i'm not very good at trusting or i haven't been very good at trusting my instincts on things and although I've put in a huge amount of work and been on a huge spiritual journey probably over the last 10 years I I haven't a hundred percent trusted that the work that I've put in is sort of gonna serve me However, from this conversation, that's something that I I don't even need to to say that I need to work on that. I know, like I I know, like I I've, I've done a lot of work. I try, you know, I know how it all works. <laughs> Not everything, but I I get it. So yeah, to have more more trust and and to know that where I am now although I feel stuck is where I exactly where I'm meant to be and there's a reason for me being here and there's a lesson in the message so why do you feel stuck <laughs> I don't I feel that the the message is in the waiting I feel <laughs> like yeah I feel and and the patience yeah to have some okay. patience so and, you... and whereas in the past I would have I you know there would have been panic why isn't this right and it's to to settle into this this energy of not stuck I don't want to call it that anymore because it, it's, a, it's a funny word to use stuck when you're not actually trying to achieve anything you know I me mean? normally we're stuck when we're like ah I, I want to be this way but I, I you know I don't know how to get there but you're not I'm not hearing you say that I'm hearing you say that the way that you used to do things isn't the way that you kind of really want to continue maybe sometimes, but maybe not. And actually you're questioning, is the way that you're now doing things the right working, the right way? Is it enough? Like, sh should it be different? Should it be that way it was? And that's that's where this energy is playing out, is you questioning, is what I'm doing? okay for me yeah so it st stuck is that really the right word for you stuck in what no because I feel like now that that's like stuck is that there's nothing happening there's there's no energy to it whereas like I say I'm just in a place where where it's different and I'm learning maybe even just learning a different way in mm -hmm. the new situation that I'm in like sort of 
physically in humanly in yeah. with a, a new living arrangement with my partner and that kind of thing and yeah just to move just where I'm moving forward to so how can you see things now going forward like how do you want to feel about things uh probably a little bit more relaxed like yeah it's okay if I just need to ask my angels a question when I'm in my car or when I'm in the bath or you know that's fine I don't have to do a, a whole production if I want to if I want to do that because that is a nice safe space for me and I do like doing that but if I don't mm-hmm. it doesn't matter like I don't need to beat myself up about it mm-hmm. and and then the other thing like the trust thing and the am I enough thing is that this is okay for now like what did you say I think I wrote it down about uh that I'm here yeah I'm here now so this is okay now like uh-huh. I, I I trust what's going on now I trust where I'm meant to be now and uh it's enough now uh-huh. perceptions the way we see things addictions the way the mind gets addicted to a way of thinking for whatever reason through fear, through security, through belief, you know, it's all addictive behavior. So I res you know, your your story and what you said just resonated with me, Lucy, by the way. Um and and I and I totally understand like what you're saying and, and I, I've been been there as well. And really finding peace with how you connect and how it feels to you is is just so personal to you has nothing to do with anyone else or how they do things or books say it's all great advice and information and it's great to help you get to the place where you are now where you feel like you could just connect instantly and it's a done a done deal so the worst times in my life um I've had to just connect straight away no time for rituals like no, <laughs> no space to go and get my cards no time to put any nice music on no time for all of that like if you're thrown into a crisis situation and you need to like connect to the deepest part of you well fucking hell please god can everybody just do that instantly isn't that like the biggest kind of gift awareness thing ability that you can have yeah and and that's how i came to it in the first place you know i didn't I didn't know anything about spiritual stuff or whatever. I knew that I was in a bad situation with my back against the wall and I needed something or someone to help me. It Mm -hmm. only then developed into this, you know, more sort of, I don't know how you want to call it, like a more romantic vision of it all. Yeah. But, yeah, to begin with, it was, yeah, just very organic. So I understand that. So that vehicle, that way of doing it, got you that got you here. Yeah. Got you to the life that you want to, you know, that you're happy in. And now it's time to step into another vehicle. Yeah. To to kind of guide you on, onto onto your next phase of life. So it's like it's letting go of the the fear that you've wrapped around everything that you've said, and stepping into. Well, you tell me what it's stepping into. I think into maybe that balance and just navigating it more like I say you know in lockdown I had all the time in the world to do all these things and you know this that and the other but I am a human being living in a human world so it's more just having that balance and especially like I say I live with someone else now so it's just having that little space but just to be able to like you say connecting quickly if I need to if there's you know a nice Sunday afternoon that I want to sit down and do all my rituals and that's nice as well but to have a balance and and I suppose navigating rolling out into the world who I am as Lucy as a spiritual person but also as a human person yeah you know practical grounded you know way of kind of expressing yourself um there is no right or wrong way to connect to the deepest part of yourself you know whatever we call it um and maybe there's something wrapped up in the way you feel you should present yourself to be taken seriously you know the spiritual label oh you know 
they have to be this way or whatever um instead of just being yourself yeah anybody can be spiritual and it's just natural it's natural I I think of my character it's it's of to go all in so it's like oh I wanted to be perfect I want to get this absolutely right I want to learn everything that I can about it you know I want to practice it I want to do everything and it's like and now I've done that I'm like oh what next you know and but obviously this is not just something that I you know like a hobby or something that I've mastered this is something that like I say has helped me yeah. get out of bad situations I've yeah. I've you know been able to manifest things through doing it so I feel that it's something that I do need to keep in my life and, and cherish but it does need to be a balance with just Lucy doing her day-to-day things and going shopping and this that and the other so everything you've learned uh, is is just you know brought out into who you are it, you know you, you take all the everything you've learned that's helped you and then that just becomes a part of your experience and and maybe what you share with people but it doesn't necessarily have to just be the whole makeup label that you wear yeah to present yourself as a a spiritual person yeah you know you don't learn this stuff and it helps your life so much you just go I'm done with that now no you know you can't unlearn things no and I think that's maybe where I at times it's like you can't just like I can't just come out and sit on the couch and like do you know like eat a big bag of crisps and just be like like I don't know any of this stuff and I do and and so I have to you know so it's it and it's there and it's it's not there to hinder me it's there to help and guide me and if I tune into that life flows a little bit easier for me or or even when things happen that are not great I'm yeah, like where's the, where's the lesson what's what's going you. on here I can unpack it a bit more yeah 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 okay thank you how do you feel now I feel a lot lighter thank you ever so much and I really wasn't expecting any of that to happen today I saw the email come on I haven't been on to my course for ages and i you know, it, as these things happen, I don't know why I thought today was the day to log on. Like I said, I've been feeling a bit emotional. I've yeah. been tracking the moon and stuff. Obviously, I know now I wasn't going to say anything. And so, yeah, thank you very much. And oh, thank no, you, everyone, for, for listening. That. Thank you so much for bringing that. That was that was really cool. Thanks so very much. Thank you. So well done. So we, we've got like just less than 10 minutes. So if anybody wants to share anything or share anything to Lucy even feel free I just kept like in my head when um, Lucy was talking about the dad thing I kept hearing if a job's worth doing it's worth doing well and that that was something my granddad used to say Mm -hmm. thing but you kind of get really hooked on that and um and uh yeah so it was interesting that that just flagged in my head because I think we well, most of us, I think, have got a bit of perfectionist in us, potentially. But um, I can relate to that sort of side of my personality as well. But the connection thing is like, it sounds like I think you identify this anyway, but Lucy was getting hooked up on a ritual as if it, it wouldn't work unless there was that whole big sort of ritual to it. Um, you know, that sort of attachment. But yeah, you, like you say, I really truly really believe what you said about your more advanced now that you can switch it on and switch it off more instinctively and not switch it off why do you want to do that but you can switch it on and it's an instinctive thing as opposed to a thought process I've got to do this and then I've got to do that so definitely that sounds a amazing situation people love a good ritual you know <laughs> they do they were brought up with it aren't we brought up with stories we're brought up with rituals you know you picture the little boy and girl at the end of the praying to god every night you know or saying our prayers when we eat all of this is ritual and it's so rituals are beautiful rituals are so 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 helpful and we all have them and they're amazing so it's what works for us Mm -hmm. and there's no judgment on it but the problem is the judging of it that's the issue 
I think that's what's happened that I've gone from it being a lovely thing to do to being um like it, it then sort of become a little bit of a chore whereas before it was just lovely and now it's like oh I've got to light a candle on my angel altar I've got to tidy it up I've got to put some crystals out and it's like well, this used to just be such a lovely magical experience yeah and then we can add in word association to not doing that which you have done you know the beating yourself up when you don't do it yeah questioning the voice like Thank you for that offering. Anybody else like to say anything? In her oh, sorry, Kelly. No, 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 <laughs> Kelly. No, no, go on. <laughs> I thought I heard Lisa say about how she had a practice the one way and then she's now not doing the one way. The word that came to me was evolved. Like her situation has evolved and now her practices need to evolve with it. Yeah. Flexibility and adaptability is such a, a helpful thing to be okay with this rigid routine it kind of works for some people for some situations but when circumstances change fluidity really is a helpful helpful ability to have thank you kieran kieran oh, is it? kieran kieran, kieran. Yeah. don't mind what you're saying <laughs> um, yeah i mean um I mean, I was just going to ask a general question about abandonment and objection yeah. issues and how to solve them. But um, just a comment on Lucy's life that that was so relevant to me as well. So that so that was amazing because uh, I did wasn't really I'm constantly battling with that issue without realizing I've got the issue. When Lucy spoke about it, I was like, and both of you were talking about it. I was like, gosh, that's that's what I'm battling with as well. Which but, bit? Which bit of it? Um, because I've been I'm fifty one, and all my life I've just been like a monk, living a spiritual life, and that's been my whole life. And then four years ago, got into a relationship, um, and now my life's completely changed, and I haven't accepted and adapted that I don't have time to do the many hours of meditation and. Um, you know that that kind of thing and just focusing on spiritual study and stuff like that and just um, beating myself because I'm a perfectionist too and I've got lots of issues like that and my life's you know much happier and every you know last 10 years everything's better but um, yeah it's, it's just that I'm, I keep beating myself up because I'm not doing what I used to do but I need to realize my life's changed and it's positive and and I need to make the sacrifices and um yeah just uh, just accept that but uh, yeah so that landed with you did it then what do you think you'll do with that because obviously we haven't been able to kind of dive in but what do you think you'll do with that I think I need to really think about exact defining my goal that was that was very relevant um when you said what is what is there you know she wanted to get there and I need yeah. to re-timetable and reschedule I need to really think about how much time I can put in realistically while I'm in real life now <laughs> as Lucy said which applies to me um and I need to what you said about we need to be able to do it everywhere we are and under any circumstance pretty much yeah, and, and I can do it, but I'm still attached to that practice thing, the practice. And oh, okay. I need to let That's go really of that. That's really, really interesting. Like, what beliefs are tied in with doing it that way? If you don't do it that way, what beliefs are tied in with it? What will Failure. Happen? Failure. You fail. So is it that you've failed in doing the ritual or is that something bad will happen and you'll fail in some way? I think, I don't think something bad will happen. I just think I've not lived up to my own expectations of, um, you know, when I was young, I was brought up with study, study, study all the time not allowed to do the washing up or cooking or anything just study mm. and um and then 
Yeah, I was forced to study. I was studying till I was 36. Oh, and um, all my life. And then um, I think I still got that kind of pattern in my head. And it has to be like that, that you just dedicate and sacrifice your whole life for that. Crikey. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. The wrong wrong attachment. I need, uh, yeah, re I need to realise those past attachments and let go. Yes, and that's definitely a conversation that we can bring to the table, um, for sure. Not me now, because we, no. we need the time and the space to yeah. do it. But um, with the... Um, Abandonment and rejection? Have you no, got any? With, with the, I will touch on that, but with the um, practice, are you getting to a point where you're feeling a bit, not resentful, but like yeah so what is happening here is a martyr energy is 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 starting to play out who in the family was a martyr my mother okay so you fortunately that is potentially playing out you know we all fall into the same patterns that we've been so used that have been the biggest influence on us so you've got to ask yourself, do you want to, are you being a martyr? Do you want to be a martyr? It's fine if you make the choice to be one. But now this is becoming a chore. And maybe now you can start to think about, well, actually, by doing that, it means I'm sacrificing this and, and you know, and but I'm doing it anyway. And, you know, and sometimes I'm, I'm not saying this is you, but just how the martyr energy can play out is like, well, I do this and I sacrifice myself so much when actually it's a choice that you're making yeah it it could be that it could be something else i don't know we'd have to delve a little bit more but when you think about archetypes think about wow what role am i playing in this now Un subconsciously unconsciously an automatic behavior and where does that come from and i get why that repetitive got to do this but i don't even know why i'm doing it i don't even really enjoy doing it this way anymore but I have to do it. And I don't even know why I have to do it. Yeah. And then the martyr can set in and, 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 and obviously you've experienced that as well because that will have pushed on to you potentially. Um, however, mum played the martyr role, I don't know. Uh, but I know that energy very well. So you've got to, it's, again, it's, it's about kind of bringing awareness to the situation and then taking ownership of the true self for the remainder of your life because unfortunately you know we get to the end of our life our parents get to the end of our life and they go our parents will go well it wasn't my life do what you want it's your life and you're like what the fuck like you told me i'm <laughs> trying to live this life to please you and they'll, they'll make some comment that totally contradicts a belief that you've been holding up all of your life that you've been living up to. <laughs> and you just be like, wow. So rather than that happen and your whole world gets shattered by them making a comment that contradicts this whole fantasy around who you should be in yeah. their eyes or the your perception of what you think of your perception of what you think they think you should be is, is an illusion. Yeah, and they can cut, cut to, and and you're powerless against it. They can totally contradict everything and shatter that illusion by just one comment. Mm -hmm. That can happen. It's happened to me. So you don't want to get to the end of your days having mm -hmm. lived a fantasy that was never there in the. You know, you're just out of control <laughs> of. So taking ownership of the rest of your life is is a huge gift you can give yourself right now, and a massive commitment you can make, which is what we talked about before. Um, the attachment that you've talked about, the um, abandonment, um, mm -hmm. that causes uh, an attachment style, which you can research a lot. John Bowlesby for four attachment styles. John Bowlesby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really good. I feel, I've just finished reading a book called Attached. Highly recommend it. Um, so it'll talk about the different attachment styles that we fall into, like loads of Research was done on babies, that when they were taken from their mom, how upset they would be when they leave the room, and then when they came back, how they reacted. 
some were like really secure, just went back to playing quite quickly. Um, others were very ambivalent and, you know, kind of, but, but very insecure at the same time. So that we form these habits based on our early experiences and then we fall into that, but they can be changed. So the secure attachment is is the healthy one that we want to get to. So maybe have a look at the attachment styles and see if that helps you. But a secure attachment is the one that you want to be working towards. And it all starts with making decisions for yourself, being comfortable and trusting the decisions you make for yourself, having boundaries, having self-care, feeling really safe in the body. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, a lot of work, obviously, um, if we've been through trauma, it's not just like you wake up one day and you have to work through your stuff, you know, with the right person, whether it's a counsellor, psychotherapist, you know, whatever it is that you've been through, th there will be, you know, somebody who, whether it's a coach or whether it's more of a therapy, I don't know, um, but there will be something that you can work through for sure, because those scars can run deep. Obviously, I've experienced them a lot. Um, if you know my story, you might not. But yeah, I you know resonate with those uh, feelings, and um, they can be worked through, hundred percent. Do you ever get to the end where you don't get symptoms? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. <laughs> but getting there. Um, when, when there is no real kind of end point is that I mean no because well, I don't know maybe maybe some people say they do I don't know um I like to understand why my brain works the way it, you know we are so layered so so layered the, and we just imagine that all people are the same as us and they're so not all pers different personalities, all the way we do different emotions, the way we see things, oh my God. So if you're interested in those things, if you're interested to go that deep with yourself, then no, it's a continual learning. But that that's going probably one step beyond what you're saying. I mean, to get over, you know, your, your circumstances and, and the emotions you get triggered in, yes, you can get to that point by the way really you can you know you can get to a point where you're not triggered by the same thing that's the whole point of doing the work mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say I was there yet you know there's still work to do which is great still juice in the tank <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I understand <laughs> I can relate to all that yeah. <laughs> so thanks for that and if you do want to join another one of these we do it like every six to eight weeks okay so and i had a feeling you wanted to i was gonna come to you and just focus on you but i had a feeling that you were kind of ready but on the edge of sharing something so if you do want to mm -hmm. do join the next one yeah it's it's more. the it's it's because it's recorded that it bothers me it, it doesn't bother me if it was just here with with just us that's fair enough, and I respect yeah. that. So maybe what you could do is maybe volunteer to be coached by one of our trainee coaches. Yeah. Potentially. Um, yeah. That might be an avenue to go down. We'd have to obviously do all the consultation and make sure you're suitable for coaching and everything. But if you were, you know, we could get one of our trainee coaches. And I've got quite a few of them on, on the call today. So it could be an oh, option yeah. if you wanted to explore coaching. in a more Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank well, if... Are we connected? Obviously, we're connected on email or Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Send me a message then and we'll, okay. we'll, we'll arrange it. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, <laughs> everybody, for bringing yourselves here. Fiona, Mel, we'll get to speak to you maybe next time. Or is there anything you want to share now before we say goodbye? All right, my love. Anything. <laughs> All right, my lovely. Thank, thank you so you. much. Enjoy thank the rest you of the weekend. Much. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.